Hi, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter, your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer for Sports Illustrated and the host of the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. It's great to be with you today. I hope that you had a wonderful weekend and you got to enjoy your family for the Easter weekend or those of you love or friends or maybe you worked and just hope you made a lot of money. I hope it was a productive weekend for you. I want to thank all of you as we start a new week um, for your liking, subscribing, your mentioning, your sharing, um, all of it. We are growing so fast. All the credit goes to each and every one of you. So I want to thank you for it um, and let you know that I appreciate it. You can follow us on Instagram when you go to Hondo SR or on X, formerly known as Twitter, when you go to at Hondo Carpenter. You can find our podcasts on Spotify, on Apple. You can also find um, on YouTube at the Las Vegas Raiders Insider, as well as right here. And of course, si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders. So thank you for being with us. Um, want to dig in today on a very important thing I've talked to you about in the past, but I'm going to explain in detail today about when you are looking at your roster in young players. <clears throat> and then we're going to begin an analysis today just of the defensive line, looking at each player, well, most of them, and break breaking them down, talking about what we're looking at for the Raiders, et cetera. So I think it's going to be a very informative uh, show today, and I hope that you enjoy it. And let's get right to it. The first thing I want to discuss is money year. Now, let me explain. When you draft a player or you sign them as a UDFA, you have to look at it as a marathon and not a sprint. It's very, very important because rookie contracts are a very big deal. A very, very big deal. And so when you look at money years, it's the third year is considered a money year. Now, the higher the draft pick, the more expectation you have on them early in their career. That's normal and that's a reality. But around the NFL, the general consensus is that you look at a player as a marathon and not a sprint. And you look at them and say, OK, what are we going to get? And you really judge that third year the third year again it's called the money year the first year you expect the player to come in get acclimated to the pro system it's a completely different world coming from college it's completely different in college you have people telling you what you're going to do with your time unless you're a huge nil player you know you're not used to having massive amounts of money um, you're, you're you're used to being told you got to go to class, you got to go here, you got to do this. When you get to the pros, there are very very few gotta dos. I mean, even though the team goes to the hotel the night before the game, if it's a home game, most of them go home. You know, in the morning. It it's it's a whole different world. And year one, all of a sudden, you're dealing with. Um. I'll give you an example, and I've used this one before, but it's a good one. T.J. Duckett, who was a first-round draft pick of the Atlanta Falcons, coming out of um, high school, he was considered by many the number one running back and the number one linebacker recruit. I mean, he ran a 4 3 He was just – he flew. And at his body size, it was just unheard of. So he goes to – College, he plays well in college and leaves and goes to the pros. And I remember eating with him one day and I asked him about what was the biggest adjustment for you when you got from college to pro? Now, you always hear everyone say the speed of the game, the speed of the game, and that's true. But he told me this story. He said, it was the first time in my life I had ever been caught by behind, ever. And I look back to see who caught me and it's a defensive lineman. And he talked about, you know, that was unreal. And at that point, he's probably 245 pounds. And he was just a beast. So the first year you give every rookie. Now, some rookies come in and shine. <clears throat> but you give everybody the rookie year one. You try to really limit expectations of rookies. Okay. 
Year two is when you expect for them to find what's in, in the Navy they would call sea legs. Now, I was never in the Navy, but my father was. And it's really just learning how to, okay, how do you practice? How do you watch film? How do you handle expectations? How do you eat? But year three is where you know on this player, I'm going to fish or cut. Uh, are we going to fish or cut bait? You really know in year three, that's where they make their money. That's where they take their next step. That's where you see him go. You go, all right. All right. This guy gets it now. He understands it. You really want to see the light bulb come off. Now, in fairness, this mentality in the NFL really came about, um, really came about from the college because it started in college. And as some coaches came from college to the pros uh, and had success, Jimmy Johnson really was the one who, when he got to the Cowboys, is like, listen, you know, in, in college, we're looking for year three to be the money year. I think we need to hold on to a couple guys a little bit longer, not get rid of them after one or two years. Let's wait and see how they do with that money year. So Jimmy Johnson really invented that. I don't know that he invented it, but he certainly – helped bring it to the NFL. And it's pretty common. Um, you know, some guys, you know, maybe because of off the field or medical before year three, but if it's not off the field and not medical and the efforts there, you certainly look at year three as okay. That's a money year. That is a money year. All right. So I want to start talking about the defensive line today. And obviously we're going to start at the very top with Max Crosby, a defensive end. Now, I'm not going to go over – there's a couple of guys who are defensive end or tackles that I'm not going to be talking about because they are long shots to make the roster. They're on the roster. They have the chance to make the roster when cutdowns come. So they're certainly viable, but they're guys at this point I don't believe that the Raiders are holding their breath on. I think they say, man, we'd like to see it. We could see it. They've got the ability – but let's, you know, I'm going to talk about the guys that are in the mix. Now, here's the reason why. There are 11 guys right now fully in the mix. And I believe that they would add one or two, one, maybe even two more guys to make this a group of 13, not counting the guys that we're not counting. They could keep eight. They could keep as many as 11. Now, 11 is a long shot. That's that's a long shot. 10, I think, is a viable option for the final 53 man. So if you had two more, then you're looking at three guys not making this list if you stay at 10. But let's talk about them. First is Max Crosby. Max is, in my opinion, I think you could take him or the Watt brother from Pittsburgh and clearly say they're the two best defensive ends. Um. I, I just think that's those two are on another planet. I like Max better. Um, I, I know the Watts. <clears throat> Wonderful people. Salt of the earth people. Great player. So there's no animus there whatsoever. I just like uh, Max is so fully focused on the Raiders and so fully focused on football. I mean, he's just, that's Max. He is fully focused on football, fully focused on, um, and yet he's a tremendous father and husband and son. But he, I mean, I, I have heard it said this way, and I wish I could remember who told me this. Um, I think I know, but I don't want to credit them and be wrong. Um, I had a Hall of Fame coach tell me one time, there's only room in your life for, for three things. And so it can be family, faith, football. It can be hunting, family football. It can be, but if you start to get over three things in your life, maybe you don't even... Faith isn't an option. Maybe it's just hunting, football, and family, whatever. 
But he says, when you start getting over three things, you start to diverge your, your expectations and your vision. And he had said that one thing he had learned from coaching great players is the best players only had three lanes on the highway of life. And they stayed in those three lanes. He talked about Reggie White, faith, family, football. That was it. Um, he talked about other players who were family, uh, who were family, who were uh, football and business. And they said that when you would start to see, like he told me a story about a guy. It was it was family. I mean, it was uh, uh, football business and family okay so he starts dating a girl now she's not a wife so she's not family yet <clears throat> and she starts taking a ton of his attention and his production started to go down and he goes to him goes listen you only got room for three things so if you're going to be in pursuit of the girl then you got to find another thing to get rid of and how that all worked out i won't get into details but let's just say it was not a a, a good idea didn't work out well for the for the man he didn't listen but when you get into max he is that guy he is singularly focused he's got family he's got football and then mixed with faith i would say is is his sobriety push and so that's max he's totally dialed in Okay, he has that Irvin Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant um, rarity, that Michael Jordan. He is all singularly focused in. If I am Mark Davis, I tell my Tom Telesco and Antonio Pierce, do whatever you need to do to get me a winning roster, except touch Mark Max Crosby. He is, and you may say, well, wait a minute, don't you have that respect for Devontae? I do. But Devontae's older in his career. He's still in his prime. But he's closer to coming off his prime. Max Crosby hasn't even reached his prime yet. That is, put your, your mind around that one. As great as Max is, I mean, he's the best in the NFL, in my opinion. His Great as he is, as phenomenal as he is, he's not even in his prime. He hasn't even hit his best. He is a unicorn. Mm -hmm. I know they call him the condor, and I love that nickname, by the way. I think it fits him. But I call him a unicorn because you ain't going to find another one. Every time, every time, not once, not twice. Every time I watch him practice, I walk away shaking my head. Never seen nothing like it. This is my fifth year. It'll be no different when we get to mini camps and OTAs. No different. It'll be like, go back and look at my Twitter feed, if you would, from practices and stuff. When I put up video. People are like, why do you just put video up of him running sprints at the beginning? Because I want you to see Max Crosby, Max Crosby, Max Crosby, Max Crosby. And we're not talking about, you know, he just sprints to win it. No, he's jumping up in the air. He's all over the place. Maximum effort all the time. Max Crosby does not have a neutral. Doesn't have it. Doesn't know what it is. He sees a football, he looks over, he's on a football field, and he's got cleats. Let's go. Let's go. When Max cries, you know, it will not be this way with his daughter. Trust me. Trust me. Max's daughter is a lot like his beautiful bride. And, and the only time you see Max Crosby melt is for his mother, his wife, and his daughter. Everyone else... He is exactly what he portrays. He walks into the room. He is the alpha male. <laughs> you watch him around his wife, his daughter, his mom. And, oh, hi, mom. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, Daddy's girl. Okay. 
But when he has a son, he's going to be that dad who at age three goes up for a shot and he blocks it. He's going to be that dad going against his three-year-old son that's shaking and baking and dunks. He's just that competitive. He's going to raise his son to be that way. There's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> that's just Max. Compete. Compete at everything. Compete, compete, compete. It's why he's the best. <clears throat> it's why he's the best. So <clears throat> I have a friend who's a producer in Hollywood. <clears throat> and I was once having dinner with him. And we were discussing great actors. And I don't have his permission to tell you who, so I won't mention his name. But he told me, because I said, you know, what makes a great actor great? And he said this to me. It blew my mind. He said, from the moment they step on the set, he goes, no, I obviously don't get in their car with them when they leave. But till the moment that they leave, they're in character. They're in character. And he said, so they if, if they have to change their accent, they stay in the accent. They they stay in the mindset of the player, of the person of whom they're portraying. He said it's phenomenal. They almost like bring them inside of them. <clears throat> Very phenomenal listening to him tell that to me. He said they don't turn it off. They just don't turn it off. They stay in character. And he, he just said, it's just different. He told me he has not worked with Clint Eastwood. He said, but that's why I would love to work with Clint Eastwood because how does he stay in character and direct? All right, this is Max Crosby. He's always in character. And it's not fake. It's who he is. It's totally who he is. Years ago, my son, Hondo Jr. and I were uh, going somewhere and he saw a very famous professional wrestler. And he loved professional wrestling. And he walks up to the guy and the guy was really rude to him. I mean, he was a, a real jerk. And my son got his feelings hurt pretty bad a couple minutes later this woman who was with this man comes over and gives him an autograph and says to him you need to understand he's in public but he has to stay in character and he wants you to know he's done you to know he's sorry that he made you sad but he appreciates you and if there were no kids around, he would have given you a hug. And she gives this gift, a couple of things to my son. It's really kind of her. And the guy was sitting there, and when no one was looking, my son was looking at me, he went and winked at him. Stating character. Why? Because the public has a perception of him. Okay, now, when you say stay in character, it gives the impression of fake and I'm going to tell you this about Max Crosby. Now, I'm, in fairness, you need to know I consider him a friend and have a great relationship with him. Um, I think he's one of the finest human beings on this planet that I know. He's a tremendous son. He is a great husband. <clears throat> and A great husband. <clears throat> Andy, in Father's Day weekend, I'm going to be writing an article about him. And he's a great dad and he's a great friend. But so when I say stay in character, it isn't that I'm implying an element of disingenuousness. I'm, in, I'm letting you know that's who he is. He's competitive. I was at a youth um, EA sports event earlier this year and, and, and Max was there in his arms you know, in a cast and he's been, he's had surgeries and he's trying to recover. And at this event, he's teaching young kids how to take off and do the 40. And lo and behold, before you know it, his hands on the ground and he's, he's trying to show them the technique of running the 40. 
And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, my God, Max, stop. He, he didn't know how to. He's on a football field. And these young men, I kept thinking to myself, I and, and, and who of us as young men are this way? So this is not a slam on the young men. But I'm thinking, man, I hope these young men appreciate the best defensive player in the NFL after two surgeries, days after two surgeries, isn't supposed to be doing this. And he's teaching these kids how to run 40s, run 40s, not even how to do technique. I mean, on the field technique, it's how to use technique to run a 40. It's just the way he's wired. He is hard wired. Now, I don't believe he would be offended with me saying this, but when you watch people who have had addictions, they have what is in it, many people refer to as an addictive personality. They only know how to do something one way. And so that's why one of the things when they when you try to help people who have come off of addictions, you, you, whether it's hunting or golf or fishing or any number of things where they can dig in on. But Max Crosby was that way even before he got here. He is a unicorn. And he's the best in the business. He isn't at his best. Raider Nation, I'm just telling you right now, he isn't at his best. My little son is 20 months old, Dexter. And when he sees video, because I'm watching video all the time, and he sees video of, of Max, he puts his arms up in the air like Max does, like the condor. And he just runs. He's 20 months old. And he's just, he's just doing what Max does. I can tell you this, as a man that knows a ton of professional athletes, I think it's cool that my 20-month-old son already looks up to him. I think it's cool that my... My 19-year-old son looks up to him. My 21-year-old son looks up to him. They love him. They don't like him. They love him. He's that. He's, he's a good man, and he's a great football player. So, again, you start with Max Crosby. Now let's go to Christian Wilkins. Okay, now here's another thing you nobody's talking about. The Dolphins tried to sign him to huge money last year. No, I think I'm worth more. He bet on himself. A lot of people are not talking about that. He bet on himself. Now, he's not everything like Max because Max is a unicorn, but he's as close as you're going to get at defensive tackle. In fact, I had one NFL executive tell me he is the Max Crosby of defensive tackles, him and Chris Jones of the Kansas City Chiefs. This is why adding those two to the same line is insane. Because if you're going to double, or let's say you're going to put a tight end on Max and have a running back stay in, so now you've got them double. Okay, well, there's only so many double teams that you can do. And now you add the quarterback to the mix. That means with eight players, you're trying to block 10. Because the quarterback isn't blocking anybody. So if he takes two, now with six players, you're trying to block nine. This is why, and, and he is an insane worker. I was told by someone in the Miami organization that everything I've ever described Max at is Christian. Now, I find that very difficult to believe because I've been doing this a long time. And I've only seen one max in football. So let's assume he's close. <clears throat> let's assume he's 95% of max. Okay. He's still the Max Crosby at his position, which is defensive tackle. So you know those two are have made it. But let's talk about some other guys. Now, Jamarius Robinson is a guy, he's a defensive end that I've referred to. And I've I've called him the young man before. Um, and people have asked, who are you talking about? I'm talking about Jam Jamarius. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Jamarius Robinson. He comes from Florida State, had a sack last year. He's a guy that showed some flashes. He's a guy that I think has a shot to make this roster. He's a young player. Um, you know, he's been around a little bit, but he hasn't really had a shot. 
when you put him on a defensive end group, now do I think he's a shoe in No, I do not. Do I think the Raiders a chance the Raiders could add another defensive end? Absolutely, I do. I do. But he's got a shot because he's shown some flashes. Now, OTAs in mini camp, there's no contact. So I always, fans always say to me, who's looking good in camp? So when I'm, I mean, in OTAs or mini camp, well, I'll tell you who's looking good, but you have to understand looking good without the physicality of football is figure skating or soccer. I mean, you can't separate football from the physicality, but this is a guy that I think has a chance. I like the kid. I do. I just like some of his hips and dips, and I like the way he maneuvers a little bit. Needs some needs help with technique, but he got better with Rob Leonard last year. Um, a couple of things that really stood out with me watching him last year is he's a terrific listener. He listens to Rob and he listens to the older players. And that's going to get him somewhere. It's going to help him. It's going to behoove him. Um, and I'm not predicting he makes the roster right now. I'll totally predict. I think if the Raiders can add another defensive end of high quality, they would in a heartbeat, draft or free agency, as long as it fit. But I think he's got a shot. So he's got to come into those OTAs and mini camps in excellent shape, showing a ton of hustle because he's going to have Max and Christian and Koontz. And I'm going to get to Koontz in a minute. And he's got a chance. He has a legitimate chance. And But when training camp hits, he's got to make sure he's healthy and he's got to be full bore, full gun, practice mode, Every day, if he's going to make the roster, if he comes in in great shape, works his tail off OTAs and mini camps, and blows it up in training camp, just comes in day one, Mister Physicality. I know there's a couple of days where they can hit, but you know what I mean. I think he's got a shot. I believe in him. I am a Jamarius Robinson. I don't know that I would use the term fan. But a believer, for sure. For sure. I mean, you remember last year, you can go back and watch the videos. I talked about Malcolm Coons. But I believe a lot of people are like, he's a boss. Get rid of him. Okay. That's why it's a marathon, not a sprint. Remember that the next time that you're ready to throw away a player. Remember Malcolm Coons. Remember Colton Miller. No. Tyree Wilson. This is a guy, he's a DE and a DT. Eventually, once he gets all of his techniques perfected, he'll slide back out to defensive end. And when he does, he is going to be a beast. I will tell you this, and I do not believe that Max Crosby would be upset with me one bit for saying this. Tyree has <clears throat> every, <clears throat> excuse me, God-given physical gift that there is to have. If you are taking Tyree and Max, <clears throat> just physical gifts, I don't think it's close. Height, the speed, the strength, the bend. Max Crosby has willed himself into who he is. That's why he's a human man. Max Crosby took all the great talent that God gave him, and God blessed him with a lot. Picked it up and said, all right, let's go. Tyree Wilson is the kind of guy that you hear it said all the time, born on third base and think and thought he hit a triple. Tyree's not that way. He's got third base talent. But he isn't arrogant. I I genuinely really, and I've said this before, I genuinely really like Tyree. As a person, he is just a just a tremendous kid. Just a great kid. Every one of you would love him. Um, he is very warm. He's considerate. He's a great listener. Um, I think sometimes he, he hurts himself 
Um, Cause I don't know necessarily think he always believes in himself. Um, I think confidence sometimes is a little bit of a struggle with him. There's not, not an arrogant body in his, in his, there's not an arrogant bone in his body. To the best of my knowledge, I have never met Tyree's family. Now, maybe I have because of where I am and things I do, and I don't know it. But his family raised a terrific young man. He is as just a great kid. I enjoy him. I enjoy talking to him. Um, I like listening to him. You know, I, I believe that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you want to know what's in somebody. If you'll just shut up and listen to them, you'll find out. Um, he loves the game. He loves it. I remember one time after practice, it wasn't even really interviewing him. I was just standing there with him. And, and I said, uh, how's it going? And he, and he wanted to talk to me. Did you see Max do this? Did you see Max do that? What about Max? Did you see? I just love his appreciation for the game. He's very smart. Larger than life smile. Uh, his smile will light up a room. You say, well, why is that important? Why are you talking about that? Hunter? Well, I'll tell you why it's important. Because he's a genuine good person and his teammates believe in him. They can go up and give him advice and he takes it. Let me tell you something. Top 10 pick, making a lot of money, a lot of talent. And Max Crosby rode him like a rodeo horse. I mean, he rode him like a bronc last year. He was all over him. Tyree never blinked. Took it, wanted it. Same way with the defensive tackles, Adam Butler, John Jenkins, and even Jerry Tillery, helping him. He was everybody's little brother, but I don't mean that disrespectfully. He's teachable. There's an old saying, you want to surround yourself with fat people, faithful, available, and teachable. That's Tyree Wilson. He's faithful, he's available, and he's teachable. I'm, I think his upside, I think there's going to be a lot of people look really stupid for calling him a bust. He, uh, you saw him come on. He wasn't even 100% at the end of the year. Go watch the video, the last video I did of the year. He wasn't even 100% then, but he was still coming around. And uh, people believe in him. I want Tyree to succeed. Um, Kalija Cansey was a defensive tackle that went with Tampa Bay last year, got drafted. The Raiders really liked him. Same type of kid. I'm going to root for Kalija Cansey till he's done playing football because I root for good people. That's Tyree Wilson. Raiders, you really have a gem. He is Max Crosby as far as integrity and character and a good person. Faithful, available, teachable. He just got to get 100%. But Max sees it, and he's coming. Um, and again, so you got him. He can do DT and DE. Again, I expect more DT this year, but he'll get some more reps at DE. He's not done. Then Nesta. Nesta Jade Silvera. I just like this guy. He's a grinder. He's just a... You know, and there's an adjustment. To the pros. There's an adjustment. And a lot of people were like, why isn't Nesta playing? He's a boss. He had Jerry Tillery and Adam Butler and John Jenkins ahead of him. I mean, he had some dudes. Well, some dudes and some great players ahead of him. You just, you just, just tap the brakes a little bit. Nesta's a guy that can play in this league. Now, he's going to be pushed. I expect the Raiders to add some defensive tackles. He's going to get pushed. But we know he's got all of the physical abilities to be here. It's now getting everything on the same page, the physical abilities, the technique, the mindset, all of it. And that's what young players, my son Dexter's 20 months old, okay? Okay. He walks really good for a 20-month-year-old. But my wife and I still joke about when we watch him walk. Come on, buddy, get sober. Yeah, but, he's, but he walks great for a 20-month-year-old. He gets on my boat, and he's holding on to everything. He's 20 months old. Nesta isn't even in the league a year yet. 
there's some adjustments. I think he's going to be okay. I'm not predicting that because he's going to get pushed. But that's a guy, a defensive tackle. Now, he is a, he is not a, 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 the term in the NFL is a space eater. He is a space eater. Okay. He's big and he just moves his body. So you get between a center and a guard and now they've got to double team you. So remember we talked about double teams a minute ago. Okay. So if you're, if you're double teaming Max, you now have nine players to guard your 10. But the quarterback isn't blocking anybody, so it's eight players to block your 10. Christian Wilkins is going to take a double team. So now it's six players to block your nine. Well, you get a space eater like Anessa Jade Silvera who's coming at an angle, and now you got to have two guys block him. Now it's four guys to block your eight. Katie, bar the door. I'm just telling you, he's a space eater. You're not going to see a ton of stats from Nessa Jade Silvera because what he does and what good defensive tackles in this league do, this is good defensive tackles in this league, maybe don't have all the stats, but they eat up space to allow your linebackers to eat. That's why a Christian Wilkins is just a unicorn. He gets the stats. That guy. I guarantee you, when Patrick Mahomes goes to bed at night and tries to count sheep, standing on his shoulder is one of those little Max Crosby devils and one of those Christian Wilkins devils saying, hello, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> that old Lionel Richie song. But I'm just telling you, Nesta Jade is that guy. He's a disruptor. Now, got to get it all on the same page, but he's only a year in. Okay, now let's talk about the next guy, Byron Young. Big on this guy. At Alabama, he was big on the rush. But Alabama had so much talent under Nick that they would almost run it like hockey lines. So it wasn't until his last year we got a chance to pass rush really his last two, but his last one specifically, where he showed a lot of flash. Early on with the Raiders, he showed some flash. But remember I talked about T.J. Duckett getting caught from behind? All of a sudden, Byron Young realized, wow, in high school, I, I was the big dog. At Alabama, I was a big dog. I'm a pup. See, that's why these Raider dogs, I mean, these young players come, you got to understand, you ain't a Raider dog because you got picked in the draft or you're, you got to go from being a pup to a dog. And, and that's a term that the players use. Every time I use that term, I'll get criticism. You shouldn't call players animals. Just shut up, Karen, go somewhere else. I, it's not an insult to the player. That's a compliment. Pat McAfee will say, Dog. I mean, you just you. There are. It's it's a it's a process. I've told you the step from high school to college is huge, but from college to the pros is Grand Canyonish. You saw with Byron Young, who played on the you know one of the most talented teams in all of college football, for one of the best coaches in the history of college football. I believe Nick's the best ever in college, and. In the best conference in college football. And he was great. But you get to the pros and it's like, hmm. Where'd you play? Good. All right, good. Nice to meet you. It's an adjustment. And I've had a lot of people ask me, what's wrong? Byron Young's a boss. Time to give up on Byron Young. Okay. Okay. I talked about this the other day when someone... Um, was asking me about the Raiders. What stood out to me about the Raiders is I'm shocked, especially the Raider fan is like St. Louis Cardinal baseball fan, uh, Nebraska football fan in college, um, Indiana basketball fan in basketball in, in, in college, Laker fan in the NBA. You, you guys are the best fans in the NFL, some of the most knowledgeable. 
And I'm a little shocked sometimes at Raiders who are who, who are just like, okay, what are you doing now? Great, get rid of you. Boom. And you leave in your wake a lot of really good players that go on and play well. Um, do I think Byron was disappointing in year one? Mm-hmm. Well, I've told you that you've got to temper expectations of rookies, but I would have thought he would have been active more. And I would say that, but you have to temper it with Adam Butler, Jerry Tillery, John Jenkins, and there was a lot of dogs in front of him. So I think that hurt him. Had he been at a position of more weakness, I think it would have been disappointing. Just trying to be fair and analytical. Uh, Next, Adam Butler. Re-signing this guy was huge. He is consummate pro. Remember I talked about Jade being a, a space eater? That's Adam Butler. And this guy, there's an old John Wayne movie called The Cowboys. If you haven't seen it, you should go rent. You should go watch. I don't. You don't rent movies anymore. Whatever you kids do these days, but go. I think you, you Netflix it or whatever. But in the movie, he the whole premise of the movie is John Wayne is taking these. All the the men in the city are gone. They're out looking for gold. The gold rush is on in the Wild West, and he hires these young teenage boys to help him take his cattle to market in Belfus. And so early on, it shows these this old, big, huge bull fighting a young bull who's bigger, faster, stronger. And John Wayne tells the kids, the thing you're going to watch is the old bull's going to win. Even though the younger bull's booger, booger, bigger, faster, stronger, he has the technique. All right, Adam Butler is a guy who's been around a while. He's a veteran. But he just knows how to play the position. He is a fantastic human. Great guy. I love talking. I don't care if it's football or what. Love talking to Adam Butler. Great guy. Just a great human being. Great football player. I walked up to him last year and said, you are playing at such a high level. In fact, you can go watch the video. Um, but a lot of what you do as a defensive tackle doesn't show up on the stat sheet. And he literally stopped me and just goes, thank you. Thank you for noticing. He's just a total gentleman. He is just, if you're, if you got a kid looking for a player on the team to be a fan of, there are a ton of them. This is a team made up of tremendous people, Antonio and Telesco. And it started really with Dave and going back to Dave, but they have made it. They want high quality humans who are high quality football players. Adam Butler's one of them. Just salt of the earth. Resigning him was so vitally important because you put him next to Christian Wilkins. I mean, you're you're just creating nightmares. Imagine. And I don't mean this disrespectful. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. And I think he's a great kid, by the way. I have huge respect for Patrick Mahomes as a person. <clears throat> but imagine him laying in bed like Dexter with a little mobile. And it's got Max, Christian, Adam Butler, John Jenkins. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you the Raiders are top of mind with him. Adam Butler. Solid, great guy, great, great addition. Great, that was a great signing by Telesco. Again, made him an offer that was completely fair. He goes out and looks, says, Wow, the Raiders were fair with me. All right, I'm staying with the Raiders. Got him. Next guy, John Jenkins. Now, you're gonna, I like linemen. Okay, that's my, I, 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 I understand the value of the game. And to me, and I mean this with all respect, the big uglies, the offense and defensive linemen are your team. Okay. And the Raiders have just so many great guys. John Jenkins, <laughs> I wish all of you, like Adam, could get to know this guy. So he's a huge bicyclist. That may surprise a lot of you. In fact, if you go to the YouTube page, Las Vegas Raiders Insider with Hondo Carpenter, I think it was when they were in West Virginia last year, him and I did an interview. Um, he, Now, here's this massive human being. And he's a big bicyclist. And he wears all the bicyclists, Akum de Ma. And uh, again, but like Adam Butler, space eater. Both of these guys, him and Butler, very physical. I mean, 
they'll power you, but they've got some explosion. They're not going to go win any 40-yard dash races unless they're going against me. They're big and explosive. That's why you see these guys getting the turnovers or scoring the touchdowns. But John Jenkins is just another one of those guys. Just, I watched him last year at the Rams practice. In fact, you can go back and watch my interview with him when they did the joint practices with the Rams. He was a beast. He just, that's when you knew right then. And, and he's special. And he was a captain. They got him from Miami. Long-time listeners know what that look was for. Just like Christian Wilkins, a captain there. And the Raiders just keep signing captains. And John Jenkins, um, I, I mean this respectfully, so I hope you take it that way. He's kind of like him and Adam Butler just take these young bucks under their, under their, their wings and just mentor them as men. I, I am not going to report the details because it wasn't nefarious, but I watched John Jenkins last year, take one of the young linemen and just have a really good talk with him about a particular issue. Again, nothing nefarious. And about, you don't want to do that. Here's why. And I was so impressed with how the player took it. You know, John Jenkins and Adam Butler are really like having additional coaches on staff. And Rob Leonard's a good one. Because it's one thing to hear from your coach. It's another thing to hear it from your teammate. They're older guys. They've been around the block. They've been able to stick in the league. They carry a lot of respect. And to Max Crosby's credit, he really listens and pays attention to them too. And so when your best player, Max Crosby, respects them, everybody does. Those guys are respected in the locker room. They are a calming influence in that locker room. They're not afraid to go over to a, a young offensive guy. Doesn't even have to be a lineman. Say, hey, young buck, tap the brakes a little bit. And they're respected. They're very respected men. I, I would say this. Jenkins and Butler are very good football players and even better men. They make the Raiders better. Then you come in and I want to talk about Matthew Butler for a minute. So we got two, four, six, eight, ten players I just mentioned. I said 11, but 10. Matthew Butler is a guy. Going into a money year. His rookie year was a, nothing but a disappointment. Last year, I think it's fair to say, was a disappointment. Um, I think he's got a chance. OTA's mini camp, first start of training camp, will be so vital. But that money year, once you realize, okay, you're in the money year, you're not producing, you, you move on. And I like Matthew. I do. Uh, I I I do. I think he's a good kid. I I don't think he's a bad kid. This has nothing to do with being a good or bad person. It's just an adjustment when you get to the NFL. And some guys lose confidence. Some guys um, struggle to find their sea legs. And I just think it's going to be very fascinating to watch how Matthew Butler comes along because going into this ever important money year, um, he has got to do a lot quickly, a lot quickly, or I think the Raiders move on relatively quickly. So he's an interesting guy. So again, there are 10 guys. I said there were 11, there were 10. I'm sorry. I think they could carry as many as 11. I doubt that. Um, I think 10 is even a high number, but I think it's possible at 10. Now, I want to explain why this is so vitally important. Antonio Pierce has said many times he knows what a Super Bowl champion looks like. Now, you may remember, this is very important. You may remember um, the Chiefs game, the first Chiefs game. 
Okay. And the Raiders were still learning some new things that they wanted to do defensively and they lose the game. Now they go to Arrowhead on Christmas and you have to go back to go forward. Antonio Pierce played on the Giants team that beat the undefeated Patriots in the Super Bowl. Now, what's super important to remember is that everybody was saying that Patriot team was the best team in NFL history. Antonio Pierce saw what happened when four down linemen get pressure. It allows you to drop seven guys into coverage. And when you drop seven guys into coverage, it now takes away passing lanes. Okay, so fast forward. If you DVR'd the game at Arrowhead last year, good for you. Merry Christmas. Go back and watch the game. The Raiders weren't having to blitz to get pressure on Patrick Mahomes, and he's having to get rid of the ball quickly, and there were not a lot of places to throw it because the Raiders had seven defenders. Now, that's without Christian Wilkins. But Malcolm Coons had really come on. Oh, yeah, that's the guy, uh, the 11th guy I forgot to talk about. How dare I? Well, I, I didn't. He's the 10th guy, but I hadn't talked about it. I'm going to go back to him in a minute. I'm sorry, I forgot him. That's no disrespect of Malcolm. That's me not reading it on a list. And so Malcolm and Max, now remember, Max is at 60%. He should not have been playing. He risked his limb, literally going septic and having it amputated. And Mahomes was so frustrated. Now, he's a consummate pro. He didn't act the fool like Kelsey did when, I'm not getting the ball. Well, why don't you also realize there are seven defenders and your quarterback's running for his life. Ridiculous. But I know for a fact that Mahomes was frustrated, not frustrated with his teammates. He was frustrated by the Raider. So that's where they're going this year. There are a lot of pass-happy teams in the NFL, and so they've got to get to where seven guys in coverage, pressure with the front four. It's what the G-men did and one with Eli Manning, and it's what it, – really twice, but that's where they're going. Now, I want to – and with Malcolm Coons. Malcolm got into year three. And when the change came, Patrick Graham was able to unleash him. Rather than trying to make Malcolm into what he wasn't, they let him be what he was. All of a sudden now, he got to freelance a little bit, trust his instincts, bend his body in ways that they he wanted to do it, duck inside on some people. And when Max was at 60%, for the first time, Malcolm got to 100. I, I don't care if you're a Raider fan or not. If you love football, and I do, watching this defensive line this year is going to be worth the price of tickets. I know that a lot of people, a lot of people think, well, People pay for offense, right, but defense wins championships. Ask Tom Brady about going up against Antonio Pierce. And Malcolm Kuntz is in that building. His confidence is through the roof, not arrogance. Make sure that's super abundantly clear. It's not arrogance. But his confidence is there. And Malcolm is playing, practicing, and working out this offseason, to quote Pat McAfee, like a <laughs> – Every person I'm talking to, hey, talk to me. How's the offseason? Coons. I mean, they're naming several people. But Coons, if he's not the first name, he's the second. Same way they talk about Aiden, by the way. But that's another story for another day. But Coons, Coons. I mean, AP, you, you got to understand this about AP. I get asked this all the time. I did a national radio show on, on may have been Saturday, but I think it was Sunday on Sirius XM. 
And they said to me, you know, AP said this. What do you think he really meant? I said, mm, may not even have been serious, but it was a national show now that I think about it. But I, I made the comment, AP doesn't say what AP doesn't mean. If AP says it, he's genuine. Poons, it's common. And I believe he is going to get, I mean, I've been telling you all along, I named all the guys that are potential extensions. And, you know, at some point you're going to have to do something with Dylan. Now, he's only in two years. So you got a little bit of time with him. Jack Jones, you still have two years. Don't have to necessarily re-sign them both right now. But if you can get them, then you can get them at big discounts rather than just another year of productivity. But, uh, man, Kuntz, he's setting himself up. And if the Raiders can get it done before the season, that behooves them. Because that means they're going to save some money. Because if he has a season like he did the last half of the year, there's a saying in Vegas, the price of poker just went up. So, anyways, that's a look at the defensive line, looking at some guys. Again, there's some guys I didn't talk about because they're guys that need to perform at a level that we talk about them. But there's some real, some real dogs there. And, and what I believe when we end 2024, and I'll make this prediction right now, when we end 2024, if everybody stays healthy, it will be the best defensive line in the National Football League. Everybody says we got to go get a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes if we're going to win the AFC West. Well, the Giants didn't have to go get a quarterback like Tom Brady to win a Super Bowl against allegedly the best team in NFL history. They had to go get the best defensive line. AP smarter than a fox. He understands. There isn't, there probably isn't a Patrick Mahomes type player for years. Maybe CJ Stroud, maybe, maybe, but we don't even know that. Caleb Williams isn't him. I don't believe that at all. I hope he is. I don't root against him. But when you know you just can't go to a Toys R Us and pick up a Patrick Mahomes clone or Dunham's or whatever, or a Dick Sporting Goods or NFL.com, then you got to figure out how do you beat them? Defense line. That's why we started right there, baby. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy your Monday. Thank you for joining us on the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow.